Hi guys, in this video we'll be talking about 10th standard chapter number 5 that is heat. Uh, we'll try to cover maximum topics which belong to that chapter. Let's start with the video. In that chapter there is one of the topic called as latent heat and specific latent heat of fusion and vaporization. Now what is this? Suppose I take 40 to 50 pieces of ice in a bucket. Just now I have taken the pieces of ice so temperature is 0 degree celsius without measuring also we can understand it is 0 degree celsius. After 20-30 minutes I notice that out of that 40 to 50 pieces of ice almost 30 pieces of ice has melted. So logically if ice has melted means it got converted into water so the temperature should have risen but the temperature will remain 0 degree celsius still the last piece of ice melts completely but for that time suppose it takes half an hour for the all the pieces of the ice to melt completely for this half an hour what are the pieces of the ice doing they are acquiring they are absorbing heat from the surrounding if they absorb heat from the surrounding so logically the temperature should increase but the temperature remains constant so what is happening to the heat? We have learned that energy never gets wasted. So the heat energy which is absorbed by that solid that is ice, it utilizes it to get converted into water that is in liquid state. So basically energy is not getting wasted. Second example, this is called as specific latent heat of fusion. When we talk about specific latent heat of vaporization, same type of example we can consider water. Water which is kept for boiling, it will take just 15 minutes for the water to boil and it will evaporate and it will turn into steam. So for 15 minutes when we were providing heat to that water, when it started boiling, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. If we overheat it, if we are heating for one hour, so for one hour we are providing it heat so logically the temperature should have increased but the temperature will remain 100 degrees celsius till the last drop of water is present in this vessel. So what is happening to the heat which it is absorbing? It is utilizing that heat. Water is utilizing that heat to get converted into steam that is into vapors. This is called a specific latent heat of vaporization. So basically what is latent heat? Any substance when heat is provided to that substance it absorbs the heat but the temperature does not change the temperature remains constant. So where is that heat going? It is utilizing that heat to get converted from one state to another state. This is called as latent heat. Let's move on to another topic. There is a topic called as Anomalous behavior of water. What is anomalous behavior of water? Only water shows this behavior. Any substance, you take uh, aluminium or for example gold, silver or any other metal, copper. When you heat any substance, it expands. So basically if I take a sphere of iron and if I am heating that sphere of iron, it will expand in size. Generally, we are not able to notice the difference because the expansion of size is very minor. But suppose I take a small sphere of iron and try to pass it through a pipe which is exactly the same size. Then I take that small sphere and heat it for one hour or one and a half hour. It will expand in size little bit so that it is not able to pass through that pipe. So basically the conclusion is any substance on heating they expand. Now water is the only substance when you heat water from 5 degrees Celsius, from 5 degrees Celsius, 5 to 6, 6 to 7 to 100 degrees Celsius, when you, when you heat it. So like other substances it is expanding, it's normal behavior. But when you heat water from 0 to 4 degrees Celsius, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and 3 to 4, logically like other substances it should have been expand but instead of expanding water will contract between this temperature this behavior of the water which is shows 
between 0 to 4 degrees Celsius is called as anomalous behavior of water. And in actual, this is helping out in cold countries when the lake, upper surface of the lake gets frozen up, but still aquatic life are able to survive inside the lake because only upper surface gets covered with the water and it is forming a layer so that the coldness which is there doesn't enter inside and inside the lake still water is present where the aquatic life is surviving. There is one topic in that chapter called as specific heat capacity. To understand this, understand the example which I am giving. Imagine three spheres, three balls you can consider iron, copper and lead. All three are of same size, same mass also. Now what we do is, suppose their temperature right now is 99 degrees Celsius. And my work is to increase their temperature by 1 degree Celsius that to make everyone's temperature has 100. So logically what I am doing, I am increasing everyone's temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Now I provided heat to all these spheres and after providing the heat, now all three spheres are hot. I take that spheres and insert into a wax. What I notice is iron spear goes deep inside the wax. Copper spear goes moderately and the lead spear goes at least in this in the wax layer. To everyone I provided, to everyone's temperature I increased by 1 degree Celsius. But what is happening now why the wax layer is melting basically because the spears are hot. But we notice that iron spear is going deep inside and in comparison with that spear, lead spear is going inside little bit only. And we have already discussed mass of all three spears is same. So the whole concept of or all the conclusion of this concept is that to increase the temperature of lead by 1 degree Celsius, I heated it for just 10 minutes. But to increase the temperature of iron for one, by 1 degree Celsius, I need to heat it at just like for half an hour or 45 minutes. So everyone's temperature increased by 1 degree Celsius, that is right. But the amount of heat which is required by iron to increase its temperature by 1 degree Celsius, same amount of heat is not required by lead to increase its temperature by 1 degree Celsius. So basically lead absorbs less amount of heat, but iron is absorbing more amount of heat that is why it is going inside. So what is specific heat capacity? Every of the object, and you can take iron, copper, lead, gold, silver, any object, if you want to increase its temperature by 1 degree Celsius, it is not necessary everyone will absorb same amount of it. Everyone will absorb different amount of heat and that capacity of heat is called a specific heat capacity. There is a very interesting topic in that chapter called as dew point and humidity. Now basically humidity is such a topic that people are having idea about it. What is humidity? Early in the morning in winter season, we see dew drops on the grass. Or sometimes our hands also become wet due to what? Due to the water vapor which is present in the atmosphere. We call it as moisture. So the amount of moisture which is present in the atmosphere, we call it as humidity. What is dew point? Dew point is such a topic which explains the rainfall also, the concept of rainfall. A very interesting one. You have to just understand and go through this particular thing. Suppose a certain volume of air, a certain amount of air is holding certain amount of moisture. Right now moisture is present in the atmosphere we are not able to see. The reason behind that is the air is holding that moisture. As the temperature decreases, the capacity to hold moisture also decreases. A certain volume of air can hold certain amount of moisture. As the temperature decreases, the capacity to hold moisture also decreases. And if the capacity decreases, the extra moisture which is there, that converts into water droplets. Okay, if you have understood this particular sentence, then topic will be very simple. Imagine, now there are clouds at this particular level. 
we can take a certain size of a cloud this size of the cloud is holding certain amount of moisture now what is a basic concept like when water is evaporated going at a certain level it turns it, it, it condenses and turns into cloud the clouds which are present at this particular level they can hold certain amount of moisture now when this clouds go higher at the higher level now the temperature which was there at this level same temperature is not present at this level the temperature has decreased and what have we learned if the temperature decreases the capacity to hold moisture also decreases now whatever amount of moisture the clouds were holding at this level they cannot hold at this level so what will happen to extra moisture extra water vapor they will get converted into water droplets and then there will be a rainfall when a certain amount of air is having maximum amount of moisture maximum like after that little bit also moisture increases it will get converted into water droplets so that maximum point at which it is having maximum amount of water vapor that point is called as dew point we say that air is saturated with moisture means air is filled or full with the moisture there is a last topic in that particular concept and then we'll end this video the topic name is regulation again a very interesting one now imagine this particular thing you are even having a picture in a textbook imagine there is an ice slab of this much size ice slab and we are connecting i am keeping the ice slab this way and i am connecting a string a thread on it and at both the end of this string i am connecting equal weights now because equal weights are there the string from one side it will not fall because weights are equal now what will happen is the weights which are there on both the side they will try to pull this string in downwards direct downward direction because of which wherever the string is present on that ice slab there pressure will be applied now when pressure is applied what will happen the ice will start melting but here is an interesting thing once the ice starts melting the string which is the thread which is there that will shift inside once it shifts inside little bit shifts inside the upper portion which has melted again it will turn into ice the reason for that is the whole ice slab had not melted only at that point the ice had melted so that string should shift down and why did it melt because pressure was applied at that point but nearby temperature it was still ice it was still 0 degree celsius it was still frozen because of which again it turns into ice this property of water is called as regulation i hope you enjoy this particular video mostly all important topics of that chapter we have covered what i want from you all is share this video to 10th standard student so that for them it also be beneficial see you later with the next topic till then thank you